Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and in today's video I will be discussing intuition from a metaphorical perspective. We will be talking about how intuition ex is experienced depending on your personality type, if you're an extrovert or an introvert or a judging or a perceiving type. You could say that for all intuitive types, intuition is the goal in itself, it's a passion, it's a hunger to learn, it's a curiosity, it's a drive, a sense of energy that you get from conceptual exploration, from theoretical detachment, from philosophy, from exploring and hidden possibilities and seeing what is behind everything. But different intuitives are going to experience this process differently. So how do you experience intuition? And how does that fit into being an INTP or an ENTP personality type? First, let's address the classical introverted and extrovert intuition, intuitive judging versus intuitive perceiving. What is intuition like for the ENFJs and the INFJs compared to the ENTPs and the INTPs? First, for intuitive judging types, for introvert intuitive types, imagine that uh, intuition is like a form of spiral-like pattern, a spiral-like pattern a synthesis pattern. Think of intuition and judging as a process of synthesis, a process of blending a stew or letting something cook or simmer, letting something come up over time, blending an idea, blending ideas together, blending intuition and different possibilities and patterns together into one bigger concept. For the intuitive and judging types, it's all about the process to getting ideas, the process of connecting and aligning experiences and seeing how they all come together to form a bigger picture, a bigger painting of it all. But to intuitive and perceiving types, intuition is much more like a pinball-like pattern, a pattern of bouncing from one platform to another. It's like jumping from one place to another, going from one place to another, suddenly going in that direction, then that direction, then that direction, then that direction. That process of bouncing from one point to another, getting from and mapping out different possible points, mapping out as many points as possible. What are the different points available? What are the different ideas available? What are the different ways to think about something if we start mapping out all of it? In that sense, perceiving maps out and shows different options, while intuitive and judging types instead process options. The intuitive and judging type is slowly processing, melding, blending an idea together, letting it take form slowly. And, uh, and for the intuitive and judging type, this spiral-like pattern has one linear direction. You can predict where it's going. It appears to be going somewhere. The intuitive and judging types speak as if there is a direction. But as it is kind of a blending style, this direction is always slowly transforming. So they, go, they are going somewhere, but uh, it's constantly, the direction, the end destination is constantly being transformed as they head there. In the intuitive and perceiving type, the pinball-like pattern can appear seemingly at random. Of course, it's not random. It's about what is the closest possibility. It's about contrast. It's about this idea versus that idea. This possibility versus that possibility versus that possibility versus that possibility. So it's often about mapping out opposites, different ways, uh, until you get all the possibilities possible. Now, for the intuitive and judging types, there's a difference depending on if you're an introvert or an extrovert. And uh, introversion and ex uh, intuition is different from extroversion and intuition. An extrovert will experience intuition differently. An introvert will experience intuition differently. For an introvert and an intuitive type, like the INTP or the INFJ, intuition is like a lab environment. It's a simulation, a computer model of reality. The introverted and intuitive type is laboring with an altered version of reality, rather than reality itself. The introverted and intuitive type is musing on information, on if it's likely or not. So imagine introversion and intuition as uh, your inner self running a model of every experience it has gathered on all conceptual information available to you, all the patterns that you have taken in throughout your life, and running a simulation to use this information in different ways. 
contrasting the INFJs for, with the ENFJs, for example, the INFJs will experience the intuition as this kind of black hole process. The spiral-like pattern is slowly going downwards and then popping out as a form of insight. The ENFJ or the ENTJ will rather experience intuition as this kind of blender, mixing information and then having it all kind of boil up, in a sense. In the process of uh, synthesis, the ENFJ or the ENTJ is rapidly getting new patterns and new possibilities and this and that and that and that. But the INFJ gets this big massive insight instead. The introvert's process is also slower. Imagine a slow spiral-like pattern compared to the ENFJ's much faster, much more rapid spinning process. The linearity of the intuition is still there, it's still one single direction, but the <laughs> process and the bubbling up for the ENFJ is completely different from the INFJ. And now if uh, intuition and perceiving is like a pinball game or a platform game in a sense, the extrovert, the ENTP and the ENFP, will experience intuition as a process of jumping upward, slowly going upward, slowly going in that like direction. Uh, or pinball balls suddenly bouncing up from the game, from the board, up to there. But for the INFP or the INTP, rather what tends to happen is that you experience intuition as a process of going downwards. You tend to see intuition as something leading downwards, underneath it all. You see yourself as getting rid of different stones and different things in the way as you slowly dig your way towards greater understanding of things. The INFP or the INTP sees themselves scaling away layers of the world as they slowly dig themselves to greater truths. And for the INFP and the INTP, the process is much slower. You're getting there, you're bouncing, but you're bouncing much slower from part to part, giving this illusion that INFPs or INTPs are less intuitive than the ENFP or the ENTP, where the ENFP and the ENTP have a much faster process, a much more quicker bouncing process creating this difference in how they use and utilize intuition. There is an important dynamism versus introverts and extroverts, where introverts tend to perceive information as something they are taking from the inside and pulling outwards. And that's also why this, this black hole experience for the INFJ is, has this massive gravity. And the gravity is what pulls information outwards, what comes out its insight and this need to share or to influence the world in some way through your insight. The ENFJ and the ENFP see intuition as something for, uh, that is, exists everywhere around them. So they are constantly trying to bring it into their inner world. They're constantly trying to take in things to add to this world. Think of the ENFJ or the ENTJ as constantly putting new ingredients into the blender while they are mixing it all together. Think of the ENFP as constantly putting in new pinballs to bounce around with, new things to play with. Don't see introversion as this static inner world and extroversion as this dynamic outer world, but instead see an interchange where extroverts are constantly bringing new things into their inner world and where introverts are constantly bringing things out from their inner world outwards. Healthy introverts have this huge massive desire to share their insights with the world, to share what they are coming up with, to share their thoughts and their feedback, to present new perspectives that the world can deal with in some way. Just like the ENFP and the ENTP is constantly trying to take new patterns around them, new possibilities, and to make them a part of who they are and who they feel like. They're constantly aligning everything they see and hear and experience with their inner self and who they are. Now, the most important things to be aware of with the judging style of intuition is this linearity, this one singular direction of everything. Everything appears, appears to be converging in one direction, everything seems to be leading somewhere. This all suggests one thing, that judging processes have this idea or this concept of rules or limitations. A judging type appears to, uh, appears to believe that there are rules to how we should use intuition, sensing, feeling, and thinking, where the perceiving type tends to appear that any, tends to believe that anything is fair play. Finally, with judging, there is a proactivity, there is a desire to put out some form of output, where for the perceiving type, it's about gathering options, it's about weighing options, it's about measuring options against one another. For the perceiving type, the most important thing is contrast, this versus that. 
but also multilinearity, multiple different options and as many parameters as possible. And in that framework, it makes sense that often intuitive and judging types are depicted as monks or as wizards with careful rule books and spell books with clear indications of how much and how and when and in what way everything should be used. Where the intuitive and perceiving types are often depicted as sorcerers, people that just play along, that just wave and spell and dance and use intuition as some form of dance. The intuitive judging type may try to say, hey, that's not how you do it, but the intuitive perceiving type doesn't really care as long as the output is good enough. Now, you could also see intuition and judging as this kind of a filter. It's kind of a filter that changes how we look at something. A filter that enhances certain colors or changes certain aspects of something. Where perceiving is more like this dotted or organized set of lines and patterns. Think of the intuitive and perceiving types as a constantly increasing map of dots. And think of the intuitive and judging types as this slowly expanding force field of uh, this kind of mesh. This kind of filter. The judging types can be said to think in gradients where the perceiving types can be said to think in grades. And yeah, it's really fascinating when you think about it. Uh, these kinds of metaphors, this uh, metaphor of the ENFP or the ENTP as the supernova or the INFJ or the INTJ as the black hole, they really help add to the understanding of what these functions are. Metaphors can truly help us understand things that uh, we can sometimes be lost to without it. So what metaphors do you use to understand intuition and how do you see it happening?